Hey y'all, it's Kate. Today I'm gonna to do a roundup of a whole bunch of alternative or, or passive income ideas for folks in the wider accounting profession. Now I really uh -huh. should say passive-ish because everything I'm about to tell you is a whole heck of a lot of work, at least in the short term. But these are all ideas that are gonna be ways that I have made money or that I have seen other people make money that are not one-on-one -on -one client work, not clicking around in a client file. I'm not even sure if all of these ideas are successful, but they're at least examples of someone who's trying. I did try to put a little structure to this instead of just making a smorgasbord of all my ideas. I had a lot of sticky notes, y'all. But the first and overarching framework I want you to have in mind as you listen is that some of these ideas are gonna be applicable to making money from selling to your clients, and some are gonna be applicable to selling to your peers, other accounting and bookkeeping and tax folks like you and me. And depending on your background and your personality and your existing network, one of those two groups might be better than the other. You're gonna to have to be the judge of that. The other bit of structure is I'm gonna to try to bucket everything into three broad categories. The first bucket is gonna be, how do you monetize stuff that you're going to be doing anyway? The second bucket is to figure out a way to sell other people's stuff. And the third bucket is going to be examples of the idea of one to many. Traditionally, the accounting industry has operated by serving clients one-on-one, -on -one, but I have some ideas of helping more than one person at once. And like I said, please remember that this is work, really, really hard work. If you are a shyster and just trying to make a quick buck, please move on to someone else's video. If you're a tax person, please chime in because I'm not a tax person, and so I'm short on examples for the tax industry. So add a comment and help your friends and make this list even better. If I screen share something, I'll include the direct link to it below so you can do more research. Listeners, you do have some homework too. The first assignment is for today. I want you to comment on the video when you hear an idea that you're going to try. Put it down in writing and you'll increase your chances of actually doing it. And then the second bit of homework is going to come later. Your assignment is that I want you to share on social media when you have made that first dollar doing one of these ideas. Share your story and link to this video so it will help someone else be inspired. Dang, I need to shorten my intro. Oh well, maybe tomorrow. Let's dive in. All right, let's start with monetizing stuff that you're going to be doing anyway. Templates are a great example. If you have any templates that you use in your business, can you sell them to people? I've seen examples of other accounting pros selling diagnostic review templates to peers. I've seen examples of folks selling accountable plan templates or budgeting templates to clients. These are great lead magnets that can go on to more ongoing client work too. Next idea, are you a writer? I've made a nice chunk of change selling my bookkeeping side hustle guidebook as an ebook. Don Brolin wrote a book called The Designated Motivator. Amanda Aguilar wrote a textbook about zero. Michelle Wong sold the book that was a practice set where she made this fake company and the reader does the lessons as if they're the company's bookkeeper. It's not been updated for a very long time and I'm telling you, if someone can make a fake company for people to practice on, there'd be a lot of demand. You just have folks sign up for a free one month trial of Zero or QBO and do the practice set in those 30 days. For Bookstone, software is a tough thing to write hard copy books about, but there are definitely a lot of learners who want books, so maybe it could work. And you can get a lot of spinoffs and a lot of other content that can come out of a book, y'all. Speeches, courses, video or audio content. So who amongst you is our next author? All right, next, another really cool idea kind of related to writing is an example named Lori Lynn Wilson, who has recently started selling a tax newsletter. She created a little company called Heater Media. So she needed to tell her clients about tax updates. You've got to stay in touch with your customers, all that. But we all know those little email updates are a dang lot of work. And so she knew that there were probably other peers who didn't like the idea of writing emails and would pay for furs. It's a pretty low cost subscription. But now, instead of writing all those emails and just sending them to her clients and not getting any money, when she sits down to write, she can get some money and just forward them to the people who are subscribed to her white label newsletter. And then they pass it along to their clients. All right, next idea. Here's one that is definitely real hard work, but maybe it can become passive income after some time. App development, y'all. I've seen examples of it with Jackie Meyer selling a software that came out of her own practice. It's called Tax Plan IQ. Hector Garcia is about six months in to developing Write Tool. He was frustrated with the limitations of QBO and needed it to be more like QuickBooks Desktop. 
So he partnered with a good developer to build Right Tool. Now he has definitely made it clear that he is working his butt off. When I interviewed him to demo his app for my community, he mentioned staying up till 4 a.m. In, in the early days. But again, it was going to be something that's gonna help his own practice anyway. So that's a great way to get an idea. And if you've got money to invest or time to invest to take that risk to build something, then you can consider giving it a shot instead of just going to get more clients. I've seen the Malabava build something called Git W9. I think right now it is definitely more of a passion project for him from what he's explained to me, but it's probably helping his own business. So he does get that benefit. And if it works out, he's built a very simple little app that people will spend small amounts of money on a lot of times. And that's great. My hunch is that the little lower price specialty apps are pretty sticky with customers. Do customers really want to change their W9 fetching app? Like, probably not. Another example of app development is no code or low code app development. And the example I have for you on that is this man named Jason Stats, who's talked about a program called Bubble, I think. And I know there are other comparable products to Bubble. But with these no code or low code products, you don't have to do full blown software development. The examples that Jason has given are to build something fairly limited in scope that you can build yourself for a very small niche or even just one client, but can then you sell that to the client for a monthly subscription and then hopefully sell it to other similar clients. You needed to build it anyway to solve the need for one client. So now go sell it to others. All right, next up is a funky one. It's not making her money for her own bottom line, but I'm hoping it gives some of you ideas and it is still in this category of monetizing stuff that you're going to be doing anyway. There's this woman named Jamie Campbell and one of the things she's passionate about is housing for the African-American community. So let's just take a look at her Facebook page and I'll show you how she holds community co-working hours and asks people to give a donation, but she's gonna pass those donations along to the nonprofits that are important to her that are helping with housing. So she's gonna be working anyway, right? So why not have a friend who's gonna come and hold her accountable. And she's also gonna be fundraising for these organizations uh, at the same time. So she's doing it all at once. I'm excited to see what other ideas this little funky idea sparks. It's not true passive income because it's not her income, but this is the way I want you to start thinking, y'all. All right, here's another one, Kristen Keats. She was kind of miserable in her accounting career and said there has to be a better way to have an accounting firm. And she was passionate about creating a joyful way to run a firm. So she figured out how to build a firm of her own that wasn't miserable. And she decided to put some boxes around it in some way. I don't know exactly what those boxes are, what that structure is, but she franchised it and she created Breakaway Advisors. And when other people who want to find joy in accounting hear about Breakaway Advisors, they can become a franchisee. A couple of other examples of this kind of idea. There's something called CPA Moms. There's also something called Dark Horse. I know these folks all work very hard. Remember, this is passive-ish. But what if any of these people who created these kind of franchise membership groups really grow it? What if they pull it off and get a lot of members, a lot of franchisees? All right, next I'm going to talk about YouTube. I'm going to put this in the something you have to do anyway bucket because I think everyone needs to be making videos this day and age. So if you can get comfortable doing that, you can put your videos on YouTube and eventually possibly make money from YouTube. I have one monetized channel. It's for peers, for industry peers. And I was going to be doing this content anyway, because it's the best way that I know how to communicate. It's definitely work and it takes a long time to learn how to be good at video, but I'm really glad I developed that skill. And I think it gets easier once you get started. Each video is easier than the one before. Now to get monetized on YouTube, you have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. It's pretty hard to do. But if you can do it, the business and accounting field has a very high payout rate. It's not like those like video game channels, the Pokemon channels that you might've heard about, like where you have to be really huge to make good money. Here's a quick peek at what I made last year on the bookkeeping side hustle channel. But again, this is real work. And I'm currently being reminded of this because I'm trying to build a channel where I teach small businesses how to use FreshBooks and it has been slow going getting to monetization. I'm not there yet. And I kind of thought I would be by now. I'm pretty sure the content has potential to reach monetization. It's just a matter of if I have the endurance to keep going until I get there. So my advice, if you want to try to get started on YouTube, is to find out another way to make some passive income that I'm teaching you and add that to your YouTube videos. For instance, affiliate links that we're going to talk about later. Include mentions of those in your videos. Another example is seeing if you can get sponsors. Even just a tiny sponsor, like maybe a couple hundred bucks, I think that little bit of money 
would help you keep going when you feel like you're burning out. Don't just wait on the YouTube ads to pay off y'all. All right, next up is swag. Do you have things that you want for yourself that probably someone else wants? Maybe you can sell that. For me, I needed a, a T account cheat sheet. When I first started my bookkeeping business, I had to remember what goes up and what goes down on which side, right? So I made this mouse pad of the accounting equation. And let me tell you, people love this mouse pad. Other examples of this, do you want sarcastic t-shirts? The big four accountant has an e-commerce store. By the way, I have a referral link and a discount code for you in the comments. See what I did there? Passive income. There's another Etsy store called Leading Lady Machine Works that sells accounting swag. I mean, it's, it's all just kind of fun. It's way more fun than reconciling a bank account. It scratches a creative itch for the people who run it, I'm sure. They probably wanted some sarcastic shirts and water bottles for themselves. And why make one when you can set up a print-on-demand store and never touch inventory and sell hundreds of these things? But even better than Leading Lady is this gal I met named Rachel Douchy. She is an accounting pro who targets e-commerce stores. So there's no better way to prove yourself than to actually have your own e-commerce store, right? So she's got some of her own print-on-demand items on her e-commerce store, but she also sells other people's stuff. She's selling my mouse pad, and she's selling stuff from Leading Lady with permission. Maybe other people's stuff too, I don't know. Look, you just build a store one time though, and it kind of just lives on forever. All right, this store of Rachel's is transitioning us to my second point about selling other people's stuff. So let's move to our second bucket. How can you make money selling other people's stuff? The best way to sell other people's stuff is to really believe in it. So I want you to start there. As you're getting your ideas for this category, what do you already love? And can you find a way to learn what it would mean to start to sell that? The most common way of doing this is with affiliate links. Most of the software that many of you are using are gonna have some sort of referral program by now. It's just kind of the way the world is turning. So you can create landing pages to get small commissions for the products that you love. For me, I've had clients use my links for Gusto, for FreshBooks, for Melio, for Relay Bank, but I've also had other accounting professionals, you know, my, my peers, um, use my links to sign up for the Gusto account. I've referred Keeper to other accountants. I know that QBO's original software commissions program is called the Resellers Program, and a lot of people do that. And you have to come underneath one of the big groups and are like downline from them, and they keep a little bit and you get some commission on the sale too. You can even get commissions from people that you recruit to the different reseller marketing teams. I know that Intuit is also developing a standalone link tracking system for people to promote QBO subscriptions to small businesses. I'm working on finding a direct affiliate link for QBO because the details are really unclear and really changing right now. Because I'm not super interested in coming underneath someone else's umbrella. But if anyone knows about getting our own QBO links, please share the, the details below. It seems like into it still working the kinks out. But if you're gonna be promoting QBO anyway, and you could put that link at the bottom of a YouTube video, that'd be awesome. All right, next in this category is that you can also recommend products other than software that are relevant to our industry. Here is an example of someone who chimed in when I asked about this question in my group, and she said she has made money from recommending a 401k plan. Are there any other partnerships that come to mind related to you know, retirement, insurance, legal issues? I'm just planting a seed for y'all. All right, people also make money on affiliate programs for education programs that are in the accounting field. If you've taken some sort of instruction and you really like it, all of those coaching programs these days are built on the platforms that have the fancy high conversion sales pages, you know, the click bundles, the Kajabi, the Thrive Cart, the Sam Carts. So if you've taken a resource that helps educate you, lots of programs will give you an affiliate link because it's easy to set up. I have two more important things to say about selling other people's stuff and getting paid for it. Always disclose it when you're going to get financially compensated if someone buys from the link of yours. It's the right thing to do. You know, you can just put a little asterisk by it or you can put a parenthesis that says affiliate link. But I see people when they send an email and it's got a bunch of links in it. And then I look at the actual URL and it says your name. And I'm thinking, why did he put that in there in this sentence that makes the program sound so amazing and makes me very curious? But yet he isn't going to tell me that he's going to get paid if I buy. What's his motive here? Is his motive his pocketbook or is he really concerned about my success? I have a list in my head of people who share links without disclosing. I see you. Stop it. The other bit of advice I have about affiliate links is, and I'm just now starting to do this for myself because I'm realizing how important it is, is that all the programs with affiliate links are constantly changing the back end all the time. The apps change, the course creators change things. 
So your referral links are going to change. So you want to have a landing page for your links. At least that's what I'm heading towards. And I've been seeing other people do this. So when I'm building my FreshBooks tutorials, I want the link in my descriptions to say heritagebusinessservices.com slash FreshBooks deal or slash gusto dash deal or gusto slash link, whenever you want it to be. And then I want that link to go to my website so that way, if the link changes, I only have to change it on my website in one spot. But every other place I put it, like for me, it's at the bottom of my YouTube videos, that link is still going to be accurate. And people are going to be going to my site, and it's going to be a big button, and it's going to say, get a good deal on FreshBooks or Gusto or whatever. And that is the place where I'm going to update my link when it changes. Because I'm telling you, it's going to change, and you're going to have your old links scattered all over the internet, and you won't be able to change it all back. All right, y'all, before we get on to the third bucket, let me shimmy on up in here and ask for you to hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment. That will help more people see this video. And that means a few more cents for me and passive-ish income from YouTube. Thank you very much. All right, well, we are already on to our third bucket. All about the concept of one to many. I'm personally giving this concept a shot by having office hours. It's for FreshBooks users only, and it's for businesses who are DIYing their books. And so people can buy a low entry service from me, and I think that I can sell quite a few of these slots. My problem is I have trouble selling, but you probably won't. But people can come and ask questions, and I don't have to do their bookkeeping, and I don't have to do their reports. But they're paying me every month, and they show up to the once a week meeting, and their question is a huge question to them, but it's an easy question for me. And it has a lot of potential to be very scalable. All right, here's just another little seed to plant in your brain. Maybe that's going to help you come up with an idea. Someone created a subscription to something called chatcpa.io. Y'all, they're selling something related to AI, answering questions for $6 per month. I have not investigated this at all, but it is an example of one thing that is able to be sold to many people. All right, here's an idea for those of you who instruct. Whenever you do any sort of instruction, film it slice it and dice it, package it and sell it. Maybe no one buys it, but what if someone does? What if there's a client that you don't want to really work with or don't have time to work with, but you can just tell them, hey, you know what? You can purchase a brief course on Teachable and I think you'll be able to handle this yourself. See, if you can do a presentation, y'all, at your local chamber or if you're in B&I, you can film that week that you have to do that two minute stand up thing. And if you can't film it there at B&I, at least take what you're gonna say and film it at your house as a dress rehearsal and put it behind some sort of a paywall. Give it a shot. All right, if you want to sell stuff to peers, just help make people's lives easier. And then you're going to sell it over and over multiple times. One quick example that comes to mind is IRS Mama. She helps people study for the EA exam. She's got a framework, and yes, you're going to have to update it, but the framework probably doesn't change too much. And you know, then maybe you could build a full brand around something like that. You can start to sell other creative ideas like maybe upselling printable flashcards or maybe you can upsell co-working sessions or co-study sessions. See how many different ideas you can intertwine together, y'all. Another related idea in this one-to-many category is getting paid to do speeches. So my advice on this one is personal. I was given the wonderful honor of doing a keynote speech last year at a big bookkeeping conference. I haven't had the guts to go back and watch it, uh, I'll, I'll admit that there's a good chance I bit off more than I could chew since I had never presented at any accounting conference, even as like a breakout session. But here I am on this stage by myself for a full 45 minutes. And y'all, it was so much work. I mean, I do think my ideas were good, but there is this effort to being able to deliver content that I had wildly underestimated. I have never felt so poor <laughs> as I did for all the work that I put in compared to the tiny little stipend and free ticket that I got. So I didn't want that to be my outcome. So I set out to change that feeling of working so hard for so little money. And you know what? I have already gotten two other paid gigs to essentially deliver the same content. I'm taking what I presented there and presenting it at other conferences in 2023. So I'm at least spreading out the work that was involved in getting my ideas together for that speech. And so I'm gonna get several small speaker stipends which is a really good way to continue to deliver like content one to many. This time the many is multiple conferences. And you know what? The topic of this particular speech is something I could actually honestly do for years to come. So I'm curious to see how many of you resonate with that idea with, about reusing speeches. 
All right, the purpose of this video was just to plant some seeds. I hope I did that. I hope you help yourself and get some momentum right now. And you go and you write down one idea that you're going to try. Like literally right now, type it in the comments. And I really hope that you come back and let me celebrate with you when you make that first dollar. Come and share how you did it. The best way to stay in touch with me and to follow my journey as I'm building my own bookkeeping business and the place where I share all my other crazy ideas like this video is to subscribe to the Bookkeeping Side Hustle Pub. It's a newsletter I put out every other Saturday. I think it's pretty good and you can read the entire archive without even subscribing. All right, let's stay in touch. Adios for now.